Peas are one of the easier plants to grow with a few exceptional circumstances that can cause problems like pests. In fact, this is some home safe seed that I let mature on the plant last year. I just left a few pods unpicked. It's a really easy plant to save seed from. And I was just looking there, there's a pea there which um, is hollow and empty from a, a, a little maggot called a pea moth that eats pea seed. And it's something that can happen if you sow them too late. This, in Britain at least, the pea moth is quite common in the late summer. So it's a reason for sowing these seeds not too late. Their best period of growth is the early spring, mid spring, late spring, to crop in early summer. And this is a nice way to start them off because um, you can be sure that nothing's gonna eat them. Like if you sow these in the ground, <laughs> mice often eat the pea seed. It can be done, but this is more reliable. And in terms of containers, I've got, there's an old plastic one, for example. With containers, uh, modules for sewing, it can be any old thing. The main thing is as long as it's reasonably firm so that when you come to push or pull the plant out, it doesn't damage the polythene, for example, here. If that was too thin, that would tend to crack and then that might damage the roots. Also the beauty of it, obviously, you can reuse them. This one I've used several times. See, it's starting to fall apart a bit. That doesn't matter. It's, it's basically mostly good. So what I'm doing is getting quite a lot of compost in there, particularly into the polystyrene one, which has very open bottom. And that's because if you don't push it in enough into the polystyrene, if you leave the compost loose in here, then uh, it will just fall out the bottom. And it's the big difference between soil and compost is that compost you can really squash and it's still good for roots to grow in much more so than soil so you can't really compact compost so this one I'm, I'm just pushing in gently because the if you push these plastic ones too hard that swells out the plastic and then it's sort of fat and, and it's a job to push the root ball out of the at planting time whereas the polystyrene as you can see I'm really pushing it in quite a lot and I want to get this really full of compost, level it off a bit and then I'm just going to make a an indentation which will be where I'm going to sow the seeds. Now the next thing is how many seeds. We can do a multi-sow here. I find that it works really well, peas for pods, to put in two seeds per station or cell and I'm also pretty confident because these are home saved seed I know they're fresh. <laughs> Home safe seed is more reliable in that way. You know when it's been harvested. Because when you buy seed, it just says packeted year ending. And sometimes it's not quite as fresh as one might like to imagine. So there was three fell in there. That is fine. Two or three is good. I wouldn't go more than that. That can be a bit crowded. And you'll see when we plant them that, that you, you can allow for spacing, final spacing with how many plants you get coming up. So... This variety is Alderman, which I'm going to put three in these actually since they're bigger amount of compost. Alderman is an old fashioned variety which grows a traditional fat pea. It's not a sugar snapper, I think it's just a normal podding pea, but it's a tall variety. It's going to grow two meters, six feet high. So it'll need some staking. Again, we'll see that um, later on when it comes to that time of year. So I'm just pushing them in a bit and then I'm going to drop compost on top and cover the seeds with compost and that's going to be it. After watering these pea seeds are going to go in the greenhouse under cover because they are definitely one of the more prone seeds to pest damage and I have lost a lot of peas over the years, particularly to rodents. And sometimes, actually sweet corn more than anything, I find. So when I'm sowing sweet corn in the greenhouse, I'll quite often keep a mouse trap charged and with a bait ready. And then just in terms of watering, when you do a first water, that compost was quite dry. And I want to get it now totally wet because for one thing you know where you are then uh, there's no there's less risk of it drying out but 
it means that the seeds are in this totally moist compost and they're, they're not going to fail for want of moisture. At this stage they need moisture. Uh, as they get a bit older, funny enough, the first week or two, that's when you don't want to overwater because young plant roots can get a bit waterlogged sometimes, but at this stage total saturation is really good. And all we have to do now is wait for them to grow and it'll be no more than three weeks. This is April, which is the last sowing date really for sowing peas. Um, you can start as early as February. Peas for pods have a wider spacing because you need room for them to grow and develop and photosynthesize a lot to make the lovely flowers and pods with peas. So here, especially these tall varieties, which is what I'm growing on this bed, uh, these plants will grow actually really big. So you can see they've got a lot of space. We planted these two rows only uh, four days ago actually, and they've really grown already. And this is a variety called Alderman, which grows six feet, two meters high. And we're gonna put a, a stake in the middle there, seven, eight feet, two and a half meters with strings along. So these peas are gonna go whoosh, 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 grow very fast in late April and May to crop from about the middle of June. And they need a lot of space for their roots and for their leaves to photosynthesize. So that is alderman variety, which is um, peas to actually take out of their pods like a normal pea. And the one I'm planting now is called tall sugar which is what in Britain we call a sugar snap pea. In America they're called snow peas, I think. And the idea is you can likewise let them get nice and full of peas, but you also can eat the pod as well as having the pea. So these, you will notice, are really quite small. They were sown only 10 days ago. And it's just an example of how you can plant, you can set out plants at pretty well any stage, as long as the roots are not disturbed. Uh, one or two of these might be actually. This is limit. I wouldn't want to plant them any smaller than this. You can see how they're, they're already developing quite a nice little root system there. And there's, we sowed two peas in each little cell. And mostly, they're home safe peas, mostly two peas have come up. And I'm popping them in, as I always do, quite deep. So for a little while you can hardly see anything there. They'll be fine. Because I'm going to put the fleece over. And at the moment, the main function of the fleece is not so much weather. Peas tolerate quite cool conditions. It's more rabbits, which love little baby leaves or almost anything, but particularly they do like peas. So these peas, by the way, have come straight out of the greenhouse. I haven't hardened them off or anything. It's warm up here now anyway, so that's fine. And the fact that they're going to have the fleece over it like this means that that transitions the effect of being in the greenhouse to being outside. And you will also notice that this fleece has holes in. It might be made by mice perhaps when it was in the shed. Now I'm not worried about that because I find the rabbits here are not too curious about trying to eat anything that's under fleece. And it's kind of ventilation. So this fleece will now stay on uh, for quite a long time. Um, maybe three weeks and you can see already the older peas pushing it up so it's fine to do that just have it straight on the plants and then we'll take it off and put stakes in in about three weeks and then they really start to grow this is five weeks later and these are the little pea plants I popped in the ground in the cold of early spring and I took them straight off the hotbed to put them in here, so a bit of a shock for them. But look how well they've established and they're really just about to grow very strongly. Being tall peas, they are going to grow tall. So how are we going to support them and enable them to 
reach that height. Well, before doing any of that, I just want to point out one more little thing. Weeds as ever. Look at this fat hand weed hiding here. And do you see how well camouflaged it is? And wherever you are, you'll probably have weeds with this ability to hide. So it's worth keeping an eye out always for weeds doing that because this one is clearly going to be very big very soon. So whenever you're doing any job like this, it's also a nice bit of multitasking you can do keep an eye out for other things that need doing. Now the supporting method is, there's many possibilities. The one I choose to use is, I've put in tall stakes here, two meters over six feet, and they're gonna have strings on right the way up to the top, like this. But before I even get, or the peas even get that high, I put another little string, a jute string, which is going to rot eventually, but that'll be fine because it will have done its job. It's just to guide, the two rows of peas into a, a single little funnel, if you like. And then they go up and their tendrils clasp on to the strings one provides like that. So I'm gonna put in a, more strings about every uh, 12, 15 centimeters, five, six inches, going up and up. So it's like a lattice work of strings. Now that's just my method I use here. It's quick and it's also quick to take down. You could also, you could use sticks, you could use tall sticks. As long as they've got little catchy bits for peas to hang on to, or you could wrap a few strings around the sticks. Um, or you could use fence posts, uh, a bit like this, but not maybe quite so high, and then with a, a mesh fence. So whatever it is, it just needs to be something that the peas with their tendrils can hang on to. And we'll come back in a few weeks here and see how these peas have grown up the string so you can see how it actually works. So now we have the first string there and the second string in place as well. So what I'm looking to do is simply guide the growing point, the shoot of the pea, up through the middle. They're still a bit young to stay there, the wind will blow them around a bit, but it's really not long now that it's warming up before these peas will grow, sometimes as much as three centimeters a day, an inch, and they're just going up every day like that during May late spring. This is their main period of growth, so I'll keep putting on more strings as they do that. It's now the middle of June and these peas have grown fantastically fast in the last two months. It's their time of year to grow, late spring, early summer. They make loads of leaves stem and then flower as they're doing at the moment and the flowers turn to pods, so we're quite close to that joyful moment I'll just mention before explaining that about this, how well this support mechanism has coped. We've had one or two quite violent winds here, uh, just exactly a week ago in fact, and I added another support string on the far side because the prevailing wind from behind me, that's why this side is actually so nice and straight because the wind's been pushing them always that way. But it's, it's held up, it's done its job, and considering it's pretty windy here, you can see the peas actually don't mind too much. They're Despite having tender stems, they're robust plants. And here is a beautiful variety, the one called Alderman, which is making these long pods. You see the plant is dripping with them or starting to. There'll be a period of harvest here, starting not quite yet. This is not quite ready, I'll, sh I'll show you in a sec. But basically, once these start to crop, you've got about three weeks of going through every two or three days looking for pods of the fatness you like. So what is a good fatness of pod? Well, here we've got one which is about the fattest I've been able to find so far. Now that looks not bad. You can see it's swollen. But the, a characteristic of alderman, this is where it helps to know each variety a bit and what they do. Alderman actually goes on swelling for quite a long time and it doesn't, the pod, the peas in the pod don't get starchy, they stay sweet. So we're going to find quite small peas in here. Or at least these are small for alderman. Very nice to eat though. And in terms of what alderman does, that's 
close to being a petit pois, which is the sweetest kind of pea you can grow when they're still immature peas in the pod, they have more sugar. These will go to double that size and still be sweet, but proportionately have a bit more starch and actually give you a lot more food. So for me, I reckon normally to harvest all them in a, about five, seven days from where they are now, unless it's really hot, it might be three. And there we got one, two, three, four, five, 10 peas, you know, really nice variety, home safe seed. And that is the first harvest of the year of peas for pods of alderman. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to scoff them because I'm curious to see how sweet they are. Oh, that is like eating a packet of sweets, actually. Amazing high level of sugar. And I have been watering these a bit, but not too much. We've had a decent amount of rain. Peas do need plenty of moisture to grow like this. If you're in an arid climate, maybe it's not worth trying to grow peas. Uh, maybe look at dwarf French beans, for example, instead. They do like a, a damp climate with early summer warmth, not too hot. Here we have the sugar peas. This is tall sugar is the name of the variety. So again, up to two meters, six feet, even more sometimes. And their pods are quite different. So not so long, smoother. And these are mange too, which means you can eat the whole pod. If we just have a quick look, well, actually what I'm going to do is top and tail, because that takes the string off both sides. And then all of that is edible. Normally you just eat that as it is. I'm just opening it up so you can see what's in there. Again, actually, well, there's seven, seven little peas and two that semi-aborted, but all good to eat because this pea has been bred to have no string in the pod. Yum. These sugar snap peas, like the alderman, will go on cropping for at least three weeks. So it's a question of coming back time and again and looking for the harvest. And we'll see in a couple of weeks how many lovely mature pods there are on these plants. Peas do come in many shapes and sizes. And here's a different variety again called small sugar. It's officially a dwarf pea, a dwarf type, which the figure normally quoted is 60 centimeters or two foot high, which is about there. And before the gale we had last week, these ones were up there, probably reflecting more than anything that the compost I use and the fact that this growth is really strong. Um, which means I've got more peas basically, but they've been a bit difficult to stake. I didn't put in quite strong enough stakes. Nonetheless, they are all good. And here's some peas that are ready. This is a, their harvest state is not big fat pots at all. If you waited that long, if you're hoping for these peas to swell, you're going to have some very stringy pods because these are mange two types. So again, it's top and tail, both sides, take off those strings and that's the edible part. And we were just trying them this morning and actually and they're not the most impressive flavor. So this variety called small sugar, I'm not convinced I'd recommend it, but there is one called sugar Anne, which I've grown before. And that's more of a round pod and that is very nice. This is more, we're gonna see in a sec, a different type of mange too. The mange too, strictly speaking, have more pod and less pea, whereas sugar peas or snap peas have more pea and less pod but they are all, strictly speaking, mange too, in the sense that you can eat everything, pod as well as pea. This is a classic mange too pea variety called Oregon Sugar Pod. And they have got a bit hammered by the wind that's very exposed here. I did not support them well enough, you know. So you can see the result of doing that, how the peas blown off the sticks that were holding it not quite well enough. Another time I think I'll run a string along. So you can see here there are rows across this bed and they've kind of merged because of the wind and it's going to make harvesting picking difficult. So what it should be like is more like that where you can then get your hands between the rows to pick them. So 
the harvest is here although not quite ready that's about the biggest one i found so far this is second week in june so it's still early for them in our climate these tend to crop um, second half of june and that is the harvest but that can be more swollen you, you've got a range of options so that's an early harvest if you like of oregon sugar pod or in about five days or a week's time that will have swelled up but you don't want to leave it too much longer than that because then the peas get a not so sweet in there and they're not very big anyway it's, this one is more about eating the pod actually yeah the pod has a very nice flavor of itself but not as sweet as actual peas so you get another idea of the range of options of food you can get from one vegetable and you can also be doing pea pod or pea shoots here because at this stage of growth it's good to take that fat you can eat and that will help the plant to stop thinking of growing more and more trying to concentrate into making pods 